Talent is a valuable thing. We all learn from making mistakes, but what if you can learn from other people's without having to make your own mistakes? Well, that's where Fraser and I come in handy because we have both made plenty of mistakes ourselves and we've learned from other people's. So combining all of that knowledge, we've put together our list of things that is useful for you to know before your first triathlon. Contrary to belief, you don't actually need to have a tri-suit to be able to do your first triathlon. It's okay to get changed for each discipline. You sometimes even see the pros getting changed for the run event, especially when it comes to an Ironman, so they've got the comfort for the marathon. If it's one of your first triathlons, it wouldn't be out of the world to assume that a puncture is the end of your race. But that isn't the case, don't worry. However, you do need to know what you're doing. And that means practicing beforehand, changing a tire, changing a puncture and being prepared. And that means bringing spare inner tube, tire levers, CO2 canister, but definitely a spare mini pump. And that means that you will definitely be able to finish the race. And especially if it is one of your first triathlons, no matter what the distance, you definitely want to get to that finish line. And also, a lot of the big races these days actually have tech support out on the course that can help you too. What, what, what are you doing? What do you mean? Putting my socks on. Why? Why? You know, it's not illegal to wear socks as a triathlete. But if you've got ankles like mine, you want everybody to see them. <laughs> Each to their own, Fraser. Okay. There is a lot of stigma surrounding triathletes and our choice of socks, or more to the point, no socks. Admittedly, you are going to save time in transition not putting socks on, and that is a bit more important when you're doing shorter distance races. But I want to reiterate, it is okay to spend a few seconds putting your socks on. And beyond the race, it is most certainly okay to have your socks on. In fact, I'd suggest you definitely do it to prove our friends over at GCN wrong. don't need to start a race laying down with all of your nutrition for the whole event. The tri suits do have pockets in them but you can fill these up in T1 or T2 and I wouldn't recommend swimming with food in your pockets even if it's a wetsuit swim. However much you practice in training, when you get to race day, when you have nerves, adrenaline, things that seem so simple can suddenly go out of the window. So it's a really good idea just to have a list to work through methodically. Yeah, and I remember one time I was doing Olympic distance triathlon and I just figured that the swim would finish where it started. Wasn't really the case. And I actually had to get myself one mile down the beach for a point to point swim. And that was a little bit of a stressful run. Yeah, so you want to obviously check the race situation beforehand. And nutrition is another thing that can go out the window when you get a little bit nervous. You're out on your bike and you want to ride hard. So to make sure you stick to your nutrition plan, one tip, you could actually write it out and stick it on your top tube. We have the importance of good sleep and good nutrition drummed into us. So it's understandable when people get worried about not having that perfect pre-race night's sleep. Don't be concerned about this. It's more than common for athletes and particularly pros to just not get a very good sleep the night before a race. It's really that week preceding the race where it really makes a difference and not having the best night's sleep pre-race really isn't going to make the world of difference. Well, that leads me on to this next point. Triathlons often have an early start, especially the long distance ones. And this caught me out in my first triathlon as I had to get up at 4 a.m. And then obviously there was no hotel breakfast either. So it's worth bearing this in mind and coming prepared maybe to bring your own food and to be able to travel to an event early in the morning. Mm -hmm. some races you need to check in your transition bag the day before the race 
and that will include your running shoes. When I first started racing, I hadn't even considered this. So you can end up with having no shoes to wear from the point you've checked your bag in. Even if checking for transitions the same day as your race, you might want to be able to consider having, say, a pair of flip-flops to get yourself from transition down to the swim start. If you are opting to wear a tri-suit, you might be wondering what you should wear underneath. Well, for the bottom half, nothing, because just like cycling shorts, tri-suits are designed to be worn close to the skin. You do not want to have a pair of pants on that would be rather soggy after the swim, and trust me, by the time you get to the bike and the run, you are going to notice the chafing. But the top half, for women specifically, is a little bit different, and I often get asked whether you should wear a sports bra underneath. Well, some tri-suits come with a built-in crop top, but if you do want a bit more support, then you might want to think about maybe wearing a swimming type crop top or a sports bra but just make sure that you've checked it when it's wet that it still gives you enough support and isn't going to chafe. Weather and conditions can change and affect your race and of course your equipment choices for it. So within reason, be prepared for all eventualities. Yeah, and the same goes for the swim. If you're swimming somewhere where the water is fairly warm, come prepared for it to change to a non-wetsuit swim last minute. Now, even the pros get caught out. Earlier this year, San Marino, the championship, it was Lucy Charles who was rushing around trying to find a swim skin when the race suddenly got changed to be a non-wetsuit legal swim. Can you remember your first triathlon and any tips that you were given before it or more probably any mistakes that you actually made in it and things you've learned? Whatever it is, we would love to hear your suggestions or tips that can help other people. So do let us know in the comments section below. And if you've liked this video, give us a thumbs up, hit the globe to subscribe and to see a video about beginner triathlon mistakes, click here. And if you want to know how to train for your first triathlon, we've actually made a series of videos on that and you can find those just here.